Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Apostle, before we go, oh, just a word of encouragement. The Bible says that they sent out 10 spies yeah. and that only Joshua and Caleb yeah. sent out 12 yeah. spies, yeah. which makes it even worse. God forbid. So in my mind, I'm thinking, that means 80% of church folks won't receive the blessings of God because they don't believe. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But because, so when you say that it was, that means the numbers are even smaller. People of God, if you are in expectation on tonight, God wants us to be blessed. We talk about that. God wants us to be blessed. But you have to say, isn't it funny how he says where there are two or three gathered up? gathered in the name that he shall be in the midst all I need is God to be in my presence because my Bible says he is Jehovah Sikhanu which means he is my banner he goes before me he's my righteousness which was Jehovah Nisi he is my banner which means he goes before me in battle that means that I don't have to wait till my battle is over because God has already preceded me because God has preceded me that means I am his successor does that make sense that because God has preceded me he has gone before me that means that I am his successor that means that because God has already made a pathway success is who I am he didn't even have to say it in the he already said that we are success America has called us successful before predecessor and successor are not in the Greek and the Hebrew Come on. Come on. That means that God had already predestined us to have greatness. He already predestined us to have success. But the question is, where are the two people who are going to believe in the power of God? Joshua, he was 40 years old when he went to spy out the land, which means he had never seen Egypt. He had never seen poverty. He had never seen having to work. He had never seen the, the parting of the Red Sea. He didn't see any of that. But he still said, God is yet able. In the midst of them making uh, false idols. In the midst of them, uh, uh, the Korathites uh, going against the, uh, the man of God. In the midst of them losing the battle at Ai. He still said, God was yet able. Not because I've seen him do such miraculous works, but because I know the God that I serve. I don't have to see a parting of the Red Sea to know that my God is able to do. And I'm here to encourage you on tonight that if God said it, every man be a lie. God has already called you successful. I say this every time I grab a mic to preach that you have been predestined for greatness, that success was in your DNA, that since the moment of conception, you have been winning. There are over 400 million sperm that go inside of a woman at the point of ejaculation. And the fact that out of 400 million, you sit here on tonight, the odds and the, 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 the math does not compute. So the fact that you entered into your mother with 400 million to one and you made it to this world and God let you be birthed. See, your mother could have had an abortion. You could have been stillborn. But the fact that you are here on tonight means that God has a purpose. God has a plan. The fact that COVID has killed over 600,000 people in America alone and you sit here, God has a purpose. God has a plan. That purpose and that plan is for you to be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's for you to be blessed. Hallelujah. Someone needs to declare, I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. Everything attached to me wins. Everything attached to me wins. Glory Everything. Everything. The Bible tells us we are overcome by the blood of the lamb. Hey, hey. The lamb that was slain. Ah, yeah, the lamb that was beaten and bruised. The man who took on poverty so I could become rich. That blood that saved me and redeemed me and washed me wider than snow. We are overcomers. Because that blood was shed on that cross. You see, we, 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We talk about giving. And everyone wants to receive. You say that, Apostle. God wants to bless you. Hey, I want my house. I want my car. I want my settlement. But what we forget to realize is that in order to be blessed, you have to give. Oh. That's worth repeating. We can take a text. You say, Pastor Christopher, where are you coming from? Turn in your Bibles to John 3.16. Yeah. You see, we use this scripture for salvation, but it's a perfect example of giving. Yeah. The Bible says in John 3 and chapter uh, John chapter 3 verse 16. For, no, give me in the King James version. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. It yeah. says for God, for God so loved yeah. the world. The world for God so loved the world yeah. that he took. No, he gave. That he shouted. He gave. That he danced. He gave. That he spoke in tongues. He gave. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son. Ah. So that means to tell me that in order for us to have, we have to give. We forget. Come on, pastor. Say, say it again, Pastor. He said something had to be given first before it was received. Something had to be given before we were able to receive. God is waiting for us to be blessed, but some of us don't uh, reach our blessed place because we're not giving. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. The natural order of things is when something gets full, it has to come out. Right. Right. Let's go and take the point of anatomy. Right. If you eat and eat and eat and had no orifice to release, yeah. y'all get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. What would happen? And we get uh, be, we get uh, cramps and hurting when when we get a little uh, a little constipated. Uh huh. So imagine years of eating and never releasing. Yes, yes, yes. God wants to bless us so he gave yes, yes. his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Yeah but have everlasting life and I think that's the beauty of his son is you're ministering that God so loved that he gave when he gave it opened the door for us to receive uh -huh. so even though we often say apostle salvation is free it, it costs something it costs the only begotten of the father to die on Calvary's cross for our sins it costs something a hefty cost in order for us to receive salvation as you're talking Sonny you were talking about in order to get you gotta give first let's you you started off with John 3 16 let's go to Luke 6 and 38 hallelujah Luke 6 and 38, because we often want to receive, but we don't want to give. And we ask ourselves, well, well, well when are you going to bless me, God? And God is saying, when you follow the word of God, you, when, you, when are you going to receive when you give? Help me out, Prophet Steph. We won't, but we don't want to give. And the thing about God, God's justice is so impeccable that God blesses us according to the measure in which we give. You can't give a little and think you're going to yield a lot. You give a little, you get a little. You give a lot, you get a lot. But God is so just in how he does it. He oftentimes will give us more than what we've given. But we have the authority and the control, Gerald, to determine what our harvest looks like. We, it ain't no sense of us being upset with God with our harvest, Minister Denise. You determine your harvest. I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with this thought, but I'm, I'm going to go here and remind me, I said, you determine your harvest. Right. Luke 6 and 38 says, it shall be given. Oh, yeah. Somebody should say, Pastor, I think you missed a word. Let's try to get this again. Right. Mariah, it said, and it shall be given. Oh. Somebody said, Pastor, I think you missed a part of the scripture. This says, give. Yeah. This is the first declaration. Yeah. That's an instruction. Yeah. That we must follow. First it says give. Uh -huh. And then after you give Sonia. It shall be given unto you. Uh -huh. Many of us want God to have it given unto us Denise. But we don't want to give. When the man of God char charges us and challenges us to give. We sit in our seat. We complain. We moan and groan. 
envelope, but you didn't forget, you forgot you done wrote down about 50 requests on that envelope. I want a brand new house. I want a brand new car. I need an increase on my job. Lord, give me more money. God, pay off my debt. Lord, cancel my IRS debt. Lord, reduce my insurance. Save my kids. You got about 50 requests. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. But you don't want to give. Listen, church. And the scripture says to give and it shall be given. It didn't say it will be given after you give. You got to give first and then it shall be given. This is the order of God, beloved. So every time we lift an offering in the house of God, you ought to be excited. You ought to be standing on your feet. You ought to say, thank you, God, for an opportunity to increase my harvest, deacon. You ought to say, God, I thank you because if it's in my possession, God, that means you have already increased me, God. And it is a blessing, Acts chapter 20, it is a blessing to give than it is to receive. And if you're asking for something, listen, beloved. God will never ask you for something you don't have. So for Landa, when the offering goes forward, Sonia, and you have it, that's what we're talking to. And Desi, if you have it every time, you ought to be excited, Minister Denise, that God gave it to you, Denise. I remember sitting in God's house saying, I wish I could give. I wish I could give shameful shameful to put anything so what I would do and I'm, I'm talking about when I was a teenager because when I became gainfully employed I knew where my help came from and it didn't make no sense for me to be cutting corners and playing no games with my source I was ashamed as a teenager so I would bowl that dollar up fold it as tight as I can get it because I didn't want nobody to see it now, if you a kid like Fernando, I understand this is a baby. But many of us are gainfully employed. God blesses us with thousands of dollars, Brother Jones. And we have the nerve to bring the, 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 the most, as they would say, the most traveled denomination to the house of God, the old humble dollar bill. That y'all know that, that joke they tell? They, they say, well, you know, the hundreds, the Benjamins, I've been to Europe. I've been to Spain. I've been to Australia. I've been to, to, to Dubai. I've been to Paris. They asked Grant the $50 bill. Well, where have you been? Well, I, I've been to the North Carolina and I've been to Canada and then I've been to the Caribbean. I've been to Belize. Yes. Then they went and they asked, oh, Andrew Jackson, which is on the 20. Well, where have you been, Andrew? Andrew said, well, I've been in the States. I've been, you know, I've been to Compton. I, you know, I've been to Los Angeles. I, I've been to Beverly Hills a couple of times. You know, and then they went and they asked Hamilton. Well, Hamilton, where you have have you been? I've been to the liquor store. I, I, I've been to the supermarket. You, you can tell how the places start to decrease, Bree, as the denomination decreases. I, 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 I've been to the the, the 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 dope man. I've been to the the drug houses. And then and then, and then oh yes, sir. They asked the five dollar bill. I don't, who who on the five dollar bill? Is it, is it Lincoln? Is it Abraham Lincoln? Bless his heart. They asked Lincoln, well, where have you been? And Lincoln says, um, uh, I've been to the fish market. Uh, I've been to the nail lady. I've been to the swap meeting. I went to the liquor store. I've been to the Jack in the Box. They say, ask the dollar, what a dollar bill. Washington, where have you been? He said, I've been to church. Mariah, I've been to church. Ain't been nowhere else. I don't know why when we get to God's house and we say God is our source, yet when it comes time to breaking bread with the one who gave you the bread, we want to cut all the corners, Sonia, pass up all of the Washington, pa pass up all the Benjamins, all the Grants, all of the Lincolns, all of the Hamiltons, all of the Jacksons, and then we want to pull out the Washingtons. Lord, have mercy. Every time the offering is lifted in the house of God, I told Apostle one year, I said, man of God, I thank God for you. 
And I thank God for your holy boldness to not to look at the faces of the people, but to challenge us to give because I know we wouldn't be where we are if we hadn't sown the kind of seed that we have sown over there. I am emphatically persuaded that we live how we live simply because of the grace of God and how we have sown over the years. So every time you challenge us to give, I get excited, man of God. I get to looking through my cash out. I get to looking through my Chase account. I get to looking through my Arrowhead Credit Union. I get to looking through my phone. I, I keep money even in my phone. So if you ever find my phone, I got some money in it. I don't believe in going nowhere without no money. And when I get to the house of God, I'm looking to break bread with my father. And I ain't bringing no Washington's Gerald. That's an insult to my God, Mariah. He's the one that woke me up, started me on my way, gave me the activities of my limbs, helped me to breathe, gave me my job, gave me my family, gave me my transportation, gave me the roof over my head, the food that I eat, and then I want to get to him, step, and insult him by bringing him something that don't cost me nothing? Y'all remember when David had messed up and he numbered the people? Okay, we, we're going to have to, we will teach that where he numbered the people because he was unsure about his military strength. So he started counting the people to see if he had enough people to go to war. And the Lord said, oh, you done messed up now. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't pull that on me. You walk by faith and not by sight. Don't start counting the people to decide if you're going to win this war. Don't start counting the people to decide if you're going to purchase 16700 Green Tree Boulevard. Don't start counting and looking at your account to determine if you're going to go buy that house I told you to buy. Don't start looking at your bank account before you step out and go to the car lot. Stop counting the numbers hey showers it's that time of year again it's time to give our greatest gift to the greatest gift this december 19th 2021 we would love to see you all there you don't want to miss this in the panoramic when you ought to been given more because god done kept you Yo, yo, tie don't determine your harvest. Go ahead, baby. Amen. As you're talking, Pastor, you asked the question. You said, why do we rob God? Yeah. And the answer to me is because we don't put God first. Yeah. When we assume that the money that we're getting is ours, we assume that it's okay to spend it how we want to spend it. But they'll fix me. But God said that we need to understand that the earth is his and everything yeah. is his. So when we forget that... It's not ours. It's easy for us to be like, oh, well, you know, I do got to pay my house and I got to pay my car. And like I told y'all last on Sunday, I have a habit, a bad habit. And, this, and I think it's because I'm a young person and I'm still trying to navigate through life. And you're always like, well, I can figure this out. I want to be independent. I want to. But I had to remember something. You taught us something early on. God is our source. Yeah. That's the first thing. God is our source. He's not a resource. He is the source. So he is my main source. Everything else that I do is a resource. So, I mean, God is the one who's going to give it to me. So, young people, all of them are a collective and our millennials, that you're getting these jobs, remember, that is a resource. God has given you another stream of income. But when you honor God, when you find yourself faithful in the places he's called you to be, that is your source. He's able to bless me and Pastor Chris because we find ourselves at the source. A lot of people wonder, well, how are you guys so young and how are you able to do and be blessed? Because we trust the source. I trust my so I understand that God just found me to be a steward over what's already his. I am not her child. God entrusted me to their care because they just are on earth. I am his child, which means that's my father. He going to foot my bill. See, but you have to understand, like Pastor always tells us, in the word it tells us we are little G's. But if we, so that means I am a princess, which means I am an heir to the throne, which means whatever I have is mine. Just like the prodigal son when he went away and he came back and his dad said, no, we're preparing him a feast. And he said, I'm not worthy. He said, no, you are my son. You didn't, just because you went off to do your thing don't mean you're not my son. 
I could walk out the door and come back, but apostle and pastor are still going to love me. They still going to cover me. They still, but then again, I got a father in heaven who going to make sure all in all. My sins are forgiven, but when we understand, Pastor, back to your question, that God is the main source, then we will understand that we can't just do what we want. We can't go the way we want to go. If you, if I've looked, as you say, as you check your cash up and you check your sewing, I've looked and I've saw, I've sewn thousands of dollars. I'll skip a bill and pay my, and get sold my tithes and offerings. I can call and tell them I need an extension. I got I to gotta sow on the word. But people of God, we can't lean to our own understanding. So often we tend to lean to what seems comfortable and familiar to us. In this transition, for me, I had to understand that God has, is aligning me in such a way, Pastor, that I can't lean to my own understanding. Because Taylor understanding says, well, you kind of don't have enough resources to make X, Y, and Z match. But God is saying, I've called you to something greater. Now, how, how much more will you trust me? Because, and as you said, in Malachi 3 and 8, it says, will a man rob God? We hear this so often during offering. Malachi 3 and 8 uh, in the Amplified, it said, will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. So apparently you, you are. That's the answer. You've, you've robbed me at this point. In, where, in what way have we robbed you? Think about that. How have we robbed God? Because it's not just about finances, Pastor. You've always taught us the three T's of ministry. For those of you who don't know, the three T's of ministry, time, talent, and treasures. So my time, I'm devoting my time to ministry. I'm on my post. I'm here to make sure we set up for service. I'm here to make sure someone's in the office to answer the phone. That's my time. My talent. I make sure that YouTube is up and ready. We make sure that things sound right. We make sure that things, flyers are done, commercials. That's my talent. Praise and worship goes forth Sunday in and Wednesday out. Millennial ministry, youth code. That's my talent. That is something that God has given me to do that I can do effortlessly. And then my treasures. My treasures. That's my money, my moolah, my bag. So I don't, have, just, I don't just rob God in, in, in finances. You can be, God can tell you he puts you in a season to serve. You'll give your time. And you don't be where you're supposed to be. You could be so talented at something, but because you are afraid of how you'll be looked at, or, well, showers, they already have someone over it. They don't need my help. Or they're not going to pay me, so I, I can't do When you understand that everything that God gives you is his, it's easy for me to go ahead. God could say, you know what? You don't want to give me my time? Well, well your time is up. Check. Alarm clock going off, but you ain't getting up. You could be so talented, have a talent beyond measure, but you want to charge nickel and dime, folks. And then what happens? They always say the, is in the grave. The wealthiest place sometimes is always in the grave. Why? Because people have so many bright ideas, so many things, so many talents, but yet they don't allow themselves to be used by God because they think it's theirs. So it says, will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me, but you say, what in what way have we robbed you? In tithes, that's your 10%. There's 24 hours in a day. So, Pastor, 10% of 24 is what? 2.4. That's almost three hours in your day. God is, I just want three hours. If we took the time to just, if we just took the time to just give God 10% of everything that he, our time, talent, and treasure, do you, can you see how vastly the kingdom could grow? There's 24 hours in a day, and you saying, well, I can't pray. I can't be on the prayer line today because I got something to do. Two and a half hours, y'all. That's 10% of your day. 10% of your day is two and a half hours. 
Give two and a half hours to God. If you're on the prayer line, that's only 20 minutes on a, on a low day. Let it be four people on the line. We all, 15, 15, 15, we all do. But that's just 15 minutes of a two hour. Are you praying when you wake up in the morning? Because sometimes we start our day and say, ooh, what's on Instagram? Who messaged me? Who, did I get that good morning text this morning? Or can we say, good morning, Father. Thank you for giving me another day. How are we robbing me? He said, in tithes and in offering. See, this is where people kind of get it confused, Pastor. They feel like, well, my tithe, I'm going to get a harvest off my tithe. No. He asked to just give back what was his. He said, I'm giving you 10 and I can let you keep the rest. So it's a gift. Here's a gift. Here's a 90% gift to you, Des. It's yours. Well, you're like, well, thank you, Pastor Tay. Oh, but by the way, I just need you to sow an offering. Well, technically it's not yours, so why are you arguing about giving your offering? We're just stewards. It's easy, Pastor, for us. For I, I, I see it. Even as millennials, and I thank God because our ministry has young people who are not afraid to sow seed. Our young people are some generous givers. We got young people who match their ties. We got young people who are so over their ties. Showers of Blessings is truly is a ministry that has young people who believe in so all the way down to the little bitty kids in JV. They will sow seeds. And, but that's because we've been taught and we've been trained. And this is where we're, right, we're here, Pastor. You're forever teaching us financial stability. We can't be stable. We can't be on a firm foundation if we steady trying to take God what belongs to him. The tithe is just to keep, to keep things at bay. The tithe, ooh, I was speeding, but I tithe. So they'll say, you know what? I rebuke it. Ooh, just, just next time, drive safe, please. Slow, slow down next time. But when you have an offering, the offering is the seed that we plant so that we can get more back. I've never, I, like when Apostle used to work in the city of Ukaipa, there was always these different fruit fields. And as I remember as a kid, we would drive past the vineyards of oranges and things like that. And it clicked just now. They took the time to sow the seed. But they also took the time to wait on the harvest. But the most, but the most important part is, what did they do between the wait? You got to wait between the seed time and the harvest. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.